Everyone knows that Comrade Stalin was married twice to Ekaterina Svanitz, who died a few years after the wedding, and to Nadezhda Alelueva, who, according to the official version, shot herself on the night of November 8 to 9, 1932. However, in the life of the leader, there was another woman, whom many still consider to be Stalin's third common law wife, the housekeeper of his dacha, Valentina Istomina. Today, we will talk about her and try to understand the difficult history of their relationship. In the deep autumn of 1932, the father of nations, Joseph Stalin, was widowed for the second time. His wife, Nadezhda Alelueva, shot herself, leaving both her husband and children orphans. The grief was so strong and deep that many considered this moment to be a key moment in the history of Stalin's rule, which made the leader even more cruel and secretive. Now he did not have a normal human life and comfort, and his home life was provided by guards and members of the servants who became Stalin's relatives. But there was a man who knew how to brighten up the difficult everyday life of the Soviet leader and created for him a semblance of a home and comfort. Such a person turned out to be a young housekeeper of Stalin's dacha, Valentina Vasilyevna Istomina, nay, Spikina. She was born in an ordinary Russian village in the Oral region, either in 1915 or 1917. There are many such white spots in her biography that are still closed to historians. At the age of 18, Valentina went to Moscow, where she got a job at a factory, where she was discovered by Nikolai Vlasic, Stalin's head of security, and invited to work, no less, as a cook at the leader's dacha in Zubilovo. It was just the moment when Stalin lost his wife and plunged into deep grief, so perhaps Vlasic decided to find a girl who could take care of the leader. One way or another, but at first Istomina worked for three years at the Zubilov dacha, and in 1935 she was transferred to the new Stalin's dacha, the near one. She served there until 1953, until the death of the owner. What were her responsibilities? Quite simple. Bring Stalin breakfast, lunch and dinner, cook food, pour and bring tea, sometimes keep an eye on his clothes and daily life. However, new powers have been added over time. So the leader often asked Volechka, as he and the guards who worked for the father of nations called her, to make his bed, sit with him late, and closer to old age, Stalin allowed her only to monitor his treatment, and unquestioningly took any medicine from her hands. And most interestingly, only she was allowed to enter the master's chambers without knocking. Volechka had a rather attractive appearance, was slightly overweight and was popular with Stalin's guards, but always rejected their hints because she was married to the military's Ivan Istomin. Valentina Vasilyevna, according to eyewitnesses, had a kind and cheerful disposition, loved to laugh heartily, was able to chat and joke. She was also an excellent hostess, she cooked well, was able to run a household and took care of the house. Perhaps that's why Volechka fell in love with the lonely leader. According to the guards, after her appearance, Stalin's mood changed for the better. But the question of whether she was the common-law wife of the leader still torments many publicists and fans of the spicy. Unpretentious journalists of yellow newspapers do not shy away from myths and duplicate them in their publications. So it is often written that she allegedly was Stalin's real mistress and even gave birth to a child from him. According to other sources, she had an abortion on the orders of the owner. However, it is still not known for certain what the relationship between Istomina and Stalin was. Of course, there is evidence of guards who said that Volechka often stayed late at the leader's house and could return from his chambers at four or even five in the morning. But does it really matter? Is it even necessary to know what was in Stalin's bed? This is hardly a necessary knowledge. Suffice it to recall that Valentina Vasilyevna had the rank of state security sergeant, faithfully served her master, respected and loved him in her own way, and most importantly, never once in her entire life said a word about her relationship with Stalin, which does her honor. When Joseph Vasaryanovich died, Volechko was the first person who bitterly and sincerely, in Russian, mourned his long-term master. It was she who washed the deceased leader according to ancient Russian customs before the funeral ceremonies. After March 1953, Istomina retired and lived on generous state payments until the end of Perestroika. She died in 1995, taking with her to the grave all the secrets of her relationship with Stalin, leaving only secrets and white spots to curious descendants. 